In this video, I'm gonna talk about my top 10 iOS 18.4 features. You don't wanna miss this. So 18.4 comes bundled with several new emoji characters to choose from, including the bags under the eyes emoji. So if you just type in that bags under eyes, you're gonna find that preview there. And that is just one of the several different emoji characters that you'll find in 18.4. So you also have this fingerprints emoji. We swipe over, we'll see the bags under eyes emoji. That is sure to be very popular. You also have a tree without any foliage. You have this root vegetable, you have a harp, and you have a shovel. And then finally you have the splatter emoji. So which one's your favorite? Let me know down below. And for those times you just wanna chill out, there's the new ambient music feature. So the ambient music feature in iOS 18.4 is, well, you can see it right here. It's like a, basically a pared down music app. And you can, of course, use your transport controls to go back, skip forward, uh, to play pause, control your airplay destinations, change the volume, scrub through the song, et cetera. But you can't really do anything else. Like for instance, you can't actually go to the artist information, et cetera. You, but you can see here that it actually is a standalone application called Ambient Music. So how to access this? Well, let's walk through that now. To do so, you're going to open up Control Center and Control Center, just swipe down from the upper right hand corner like that. And then you're gonna tap the little plus button in the upper left hand corner to add a new Control Center shortcut. So tap add a control, and there you'll see the new ambient music function right there. So you have sleep, chill, productivity, and well-being. So you can add any of those or all of them to your Control Center just by tapping like that. So let's go ahead and just quickly add all of them. So there we go, there's all four. Now if you tap them while still in edit mode, you can actually go in there and change the playlist. So Apple provides four different playlist options for each ambient music type, and you can switch between those. You can also add a playlist directly from your library if you choose to do that. So it's gonna be up to you however you wanna do it. You can add your own or use one of the canned playlists that Apple provides from Apple Music. And some of these may be familiar to you just by looking at their names. Now you can also start playback of an ambient music station just by tapping the ambient music button or toggle in control center. And there we go. And you can use the dynamic island to open it all up or use the shortcut within the control center to open it up to the main ambient music interface where you can go in there and control it. Now, here's the other thing about ambient music. Since it is a control center toggle, you can actually add this directly to your action button to be able to invoke the ambient music directly from the action button. And you can go in there and customize the playlist there as well. So now if I press and hold on the action button, you could see in the dynamic island, it starts playing back my ambient music station just like that. And also on the lock screen, since it is a control center shortcut, you can add an ambient music shortcut there. There's also the ability to prioritize your notifications with Apple intelligence. So all you do is go to settings, notifications, and you'll see where it says prioritize notifications. So when you go there, you can see Apple intelligence can show you notifications that may be important in a separate section on the lock screen. And you can actually choose which apps you want to work with the priority notifications. So these notifications stand out. It's going to be very obvious when you receive them. And iPhone 15 Pro owners rejoice because there's now a way to invoke visual intelligence using the action button thanks to new visual intelligence shortcuts. So you can see you can actually assign a control for visual intelligence and invoke it that way. And that works just as you would expect. But what's cool is that in 18.4, when you go to assign the control to the action button, there's actually a dedicated visual intelligence action for the action button just like that. So you can just select that one and that will allow you to quickly invoke visual intelligence using a long press on your action button just like that. And you may be wondering well, what is visual intelligence exactly if you've never used it or if you don't see the uh, benefit of it, let me just show you a quick demonstration. So basically you put whatever you want in the viewfinder like that. And for instance, you can tap to perform a Google image search and it will quickly tell you what this is, whatever you're looking at. So in this case, Keychron K3 Max, it was accurately able to give me details on that. Or I can tap where it says ask and it will use ChatGPT to determine what this is. 
So just give it a second. You can see this is a mechanical keyboard with a compact layout. So it gives you those details. But what if I wanted to know who makes this? So I just type in this box, say who makes it, submit that query. And it's working with ChatGPT and it's going to try to figure it out. And you can see it does a good job. This image appears to be from Keychron. If you're a foodie that happens to be an Apple News Plus subscriber, there's a new feature that I think you're going to like. And this feature allows you to view recipes within the news app. So if you're an Apple News Plus subscriber, you can view recipes. You can also view articles related to those specific recipes. And it gives you some details on baked ziti for, the, for instance here. I tap recipe and now if I scroll down here, I can see the ingredients and then eventually it'll show me the directions and I can even get more info on the recipe, but notice what you see here. You see the ability to set a timer directly from the recipe instructions, and you can actually set multiple timers if you want to do that. You can see step eight, bake ZD, the timer's counting down. So you can see how this could be very handy on a larger device like an iPad or perhaps a HomePad. What do you guys think? And finally, robot vacuum support in the Home app comes to 18.4 thanks to matter compatibility. So this is something that I've yet to be able to test, but I'm looking forward to getting one of the compatible robot vacuums like the SwitchBot S10 robot vacuum and mop. Uh, so I'll be getting that soon and we'll hopefully be walking through controlling my vacuum with Siri and through the home app. But that is a much, much needed feature and something we've been looking forward to for quite some time. There's also a new proximity-based macOS setup in 18.4 if you're running macOS 15.4 on newer Macs. So what this allows you to do is to get your iPhone or your iPad, and then once it's near a new Mac, it's gonna prompt you to set up that new Mac. You just tap continue, and then you hold up your phone to your Mac's display. So you can see this little fingerprint display right here. So you just hold it up like that, just like you would when setting up a new iPhone to start setup of your Mac. Super handy new feature. And the categories that we've been enjoying on iPhone in the mail app finally comes to iPad OS in 18.4. So here you can see your various categories, like your primary, your transactions, promotions, et cetera, right there. And you can break it down between all those different categories and view only those related items. And then within each email thread, you can go in and further basically break it down to either show only things related to promotions while under promotions or show all mail from that particular sender as well. So definitely nice to have parity with the iOS version of mail. And 18.4 includes lots of subtle, but very handy new photos updates. Let me walk through those for you right now. So for instance, you can switch in the album section to a key photo view instead of the list view. And now you can also sort utilities and media types if you want to. So here you see media types, you see utilities below that. If I tap media types, you'll see a new edit button in the upper right hand corner. And that's going to allow me, for instance, to drag up slow. Well, didn't actually work that time, but if I, to tap and drag slow-mo up using the drag handle that I could put that in one of the first four slots. And why is that important? Because the first four, four slots are what appear on the main page there in the photos app. And there's the ability to filter on shared with you or not in an album. And this lets you quickly find photos that were sent to you. And in 18.4, you can now hide recent searches in Safari. So of course, when I tap on the search bar, you can see my recent searches at the top. So I have ChatGPT, Microsoft, Apple. I can clear those if I want to individually or in one fell swoop, but now you'll find this new show recent searches toggle. You can turn that off. And now when you search, there's no recent searches displayed. So that is a look at iOS 18.4. What is your favorite new feature? Of course, this is just the tip of the iceberg. If you want a full look at all of what iOS 18.4 contains, be sure to check out my full walkthrough I'll have that link down below in the description. And if you appreciate videos like this, be sure to thumbs up and click the subscribe button. This is iOS Decoded from Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac.